Hey there, welcome to another video. So in this video, we are going to talk about the last case of end behavior of rational functions. That's a little deceiving because the title is end behavior of rational functions. I do want to tell you that horizontal asymptotes or an oblique asymptote, uh, that is also end behavior. They're just special cases. So this is the case where what if a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero or y equals a constant or an oblique asymptote at y equals some sort of linear function does not happen. So uh, what, what would that look like? Well, a horizontal asymptote we know happens when the degree of the denominator is equal to the numerator or bigger than the numerator. You're going to get constant or zero respectively. Uh, we know that an oblique asymptote, sometimes called a slant or diagonal asymptote, happens when the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator, but by only one. Well, what if we have the degree of the numerator larger than the degree of the denominator by more than one? Then we're just going to get some straight up end behavior. It's not hard. It, it, this is going to look very similar to what we did on horizontal asymptotes uh, when we found those things. So when we do this, when we deal with just end behavior, we would look at and go, okay, let, let's first just identify some degrees because that is a nice way to at least understand where, what we're going to be getting out of this thing. We look at the degree of the numerator is five, degree of denominator is three. So remember, denominator has to be bigger or equal for us to get horizontal. Numerator has to be bigger by exactly one for us to get oblique. More than that, we just have end behavior. So this degree is five, that degree is three. The numerator outpaces the denominator by more than one. So there is no horizontal, there is no oblique, we're just getting end behavior. Remember, you cannot have all of them. You're either horizontal or you are oblique or you have end behavior that's different from those things. So we're just gonna take a look at this by taking the leading terms. That's what end behavior is defined as, is taking the leading terms of your polynomial. In this case, we have two of them. So we take the leading term of our numerator and denominator. In the previous videos, we talked about how leading terms are power functions. And so when you put power functions in ratio, either your numerator or your denominator is going to completely cancel out as far as the variables are concerned. Well, if we have a numerator that's larger in degree by more than one, our denominator is going to completely disappear as far as its variables. So we would say, all right, here's x to the third, x to the fifth. Notice you'll never get a one when you do this unless you have an oblique asymptote. And this would give us 4x squared. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that's exactly, exactly what this graph is going to look like as we get end behavior. So just picture in your head what that even positive power function looks like. This is 4x squared. It's narrow. It's upward opening. It looks like a parabola. This is going to do this. Now, of course, we're going to have some things that happen in the middle, like x-intercepts or some vertical asymptotes, but we will not have a horizontal asymptote. We will not have an oblique asymptote. This function will actually be modeled by 4x squared as x approaches positive and negative infinity. You can see it. Take x, make it really large. As x approaches positive infinity, four times really big numbers squared are enormous numbers. This function would also approach positive infinity. Now think about x approaches negative infinity. Take some really big negative numbers on the x-axis. Square them. Oh wait, that's positive. Okay, multiply by four, that's even more positive. That's also positive infinity. So if I take really big numbers squared, multiply by four, I get really big numbers. If I take really negative numbers, square them, multiply by four, I get really big numbers. So this function would also approach positive infinity. That's why we get that look. That's why even functions do that. So this is the, the model of this graph as we approach the end behavior. That's, that's all it is. Now, of course, you know me. I like to cover lots of cases with one example. So what would happen if that were negative? So let's imagine that's negative, that's negative, that's negative. Really, nothing you do would change except now positive numbers times a negative would be negative infinity. And positive numbers, because large negative number squared times negative would be negative infinity as well. So this would go negative, negative, and our graph would look. You know, I should probably do a different case. I don't want to confuse you. 
Let's do it down here. Let's suppose that g of x looked like that in its end behavior. Then we would just end up getting a negative, a negative even power function, just a downward opening. So this, cool, this, no big deal. Uh, one more case, let's say that we did all this and this happened to be like 4x to the sixth. over x cubed. So if that was a power 6, we'd get something like that. How would that look? Well, when we simplify it, remember power functions can simplify, that would give us a power 3. So this would be 4x to the third. Well, just think about what that power function looks like, and that would be the modeling of our original rational function if we had started with 4x to the sixth power, like we have here. Well, that's an odd, okay, uh, an odd, a, a, a cubic in this case, and it's positive. So um, let's see, odd power functions look like this when they're positive. So this end behavior would be very close to that. It would mirror or model 4x to the third. That's what that's going to be. Again, if we change it to negative, all that really happens is we reflect that graph. And then that would model the end behavior of this function. So if I just made that negative and made that a 6, negative 4x to the 6 over x to the 3rd would give us negative 4x to the 3rd. The end behavior would look just like that. Things can happen in the middle. We can have x-intercepts, vertical asymptotes, things like that. Uh, but this is what the end behavior would look like. So I hope that makes sense. Hope that you all uh, you all understand end behavior a little bit better than when we started. Next example, the next video, we're going to practice about six examples, just really hammering through what do you do first, what do you do second, what what do our uh, where do our vertical asymptotes come from, horizontal asymptote, where does it come from, oblique or a hole, and what to do with that. After that, we'll we'll practice graphing a lot of examples. It'll be a huge video, uh, kind of intimidating in, in its length, but you need to watch it uh, because this is it's one of the capstones of this course. Uh, is being able to graph rational functions pro appropriately. So I'm going to teach you that. Uh, next video, we're just going to practice putting everything together. So I'll see you for that.